All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, I'm Pamela. I'm the content marketing manager here at Pixels. And today joining us is Ryan Roberts. Ah. Uh, I'm the uh, customer success director for North America for Pixels. Um, and I, my team handles uh, the liaison basically between our platform and the, uh, the customers. Thank you, Ryan. Um, so welcome everybody. This is our style guide show where we talk about all things related to the industry. Um, and today it's almost the end of the year. So we thought we would um, take the time, look back on 2022. Um, Ryan and I were really lucky this year um, to attend four different flow events, um, meaning we got the chance to talk to people from all across the industry learn about so many different things. And we really just want to take this time to discuss some of the sort of overarching themes we heard about throughout the year um, and share them with you. So dissect them a little bit, right? Absolutely. Um, but before we dive in, um, we had two questions we wanted to ask everybody to get the conversation started. So um, right here within the live storm, you should see a chat there. We've got some people already saying hello. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so if you look at that chat where some people are saying hello, um, you can leave um, comments, questions, whatever, throughout the entire webinar. But right now, we're going to ask you two questions. Um, the first one, what have you been experimenting with in 2022? Uh, and let's keep this professional. This is only from a content creation standpoint. Thank you. Like that's a disclaimer. I've actually just put those, the two questions I'm going to ask, I've already put them in the chat there. And the second question is, what are you anticipating for 2023? Um, Ryan, do you want to, do you want to share yours? Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, just from a creative standpoint, I always have to kind of keep my creative uh, flow going. Uh, I've been experimenting quite a bit with uh, panoramic photography and just, you know, it's a, a, a new way for me to capture uh, the scenes that are that I that I come across, and it's just it's really rekindled uh, my passion for photography. Hopefully, we get to see some of that soon. Absolutely. Let me see it. Um, what are you anticipating for 2023? Uh, I think we're going to continue to see uh, people <clears throat> yeah, pushing pushing the, the the elevation of their PDP. Um, you know, I, I we've heard that word for 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 quite some time now. You know, kind of breaking uh, uh, from what we call traditional, which was very narrative, into elevated. Uh, and so that that word's been used, but it kind of reminds me of the time when digital photography uh, was, was, was being used to, to describe what is now just called photography. And I think that, right. you know, that's what we're in right now is uh, 2023, you know, we'll slowly start to realize that elevated is just the new standard. Um, and I think we're going to touch on that maybe a little bit more as we, we talk today. And um, for myself personally, um, I, I'm content marketing here at Pixels. Um, and so lucky enough to experiment with webinars like this one this year, which has been nice. Get to talk to people like Ryan all the time. <laughs> um, for and to, what I'm anticipating for 2023, um, this is just a gut idea I'm running off of, which is um, seeing some more refined, polished, kind of what you're talking about, elevated, expecting to see uh, a little less grain or things that try to be um, reflect maybe the, the at home life we've had and things that are a little more um, polished and refined in content. Um, yeah. And then I can see we've got some people chiming in. We hear video twice already. Um, I don't know if that's experimented with or anticipating. Probably both, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and even more, oh, and even more content on the PDP. Um, I think that's also something we're about to dive into here as well, too. Absolutely. So it sounds like we're not the only ones thinking about these things. Um, if you want to chime in at any time to answer those questions, feel free to do it right there in the chat, everybody. Um, all right. So those were our opening questions, but let's dive in now. Let's do it. 
All right. What was the big change this year, Ryan? I think uh, one of the most significant changes is in-person's back. Um, and that means in-person uh, people getting back into the office, people getting back into the studios, uh, people, uh, you know, uh, uh, being able to do client visits again. I mean, you know, we went through this uh, period during COVID, uh, which, you know, I, at the end of the day, I think it was uh, a good break for us because, you know, it, it made us rethink the way that we created um, content. It made us rethink the, the, the whole production uh, of the content that we needed. Um, and, you know, I, which out of necessity, led to a lot of experimentation, you know, yeah. and, 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 and frankly, that's what creatives love, you know, creatives love to be able to like break out of a box and, and think about things differently. And so um, I think, you know, across the boards, uh, the break uh, uh, caused by COVID um, and, and the experimentation that came out of that was, was a healthy thing for, for all of the creatives. You know, and now that everyone's getting back into the offices and getting back into the studios, they're able to collaborate in person and and and, and creative collaboration. I really do believe benefits greatly by being in the same room uh, with one another and basically just spitballing. Um, <clears throat> but now we're going back into uh, these stu the studios and the offices <clears throat> with this mentality of experimentation is okay. And, you know, we're starting to we're, we're seeing that in the work that's being produced now, um, you know, and, and, and really uh, elevation of content is just a natural result of, of this new mentality and, and people getting back in. Um, and, of course, in-person events are back as we experience yes. with all of our flow events. And that's just I mean, I, I did not realize just how much I miss the yeah. in-person human contact, being able to hug people that I haven't seen in a couple of years, handshakes, high fives, whatever. It was just, it was, it was great. So yeah, I think that's a major thing this year. And I, and I think as well, I mean, talking about with COVID having to create with limitations, experiment in new ways. And, and just like for us with um, going from webinars to producing in-person events mm -hmm. and you're also able to use tools you haven't used in quite a while, you know, like that's also very exciting. And I imagine it's the same in the studio when you're finally able to get back to all the big um, stages and cameras and lighting, everything you're used to. It's, it's quite exciting, right? Sure. And I mean, you're coming back with uh, just a new way of thinking. So, you know, it may be, um, you, you may be using some of the same old tools, but you're coming in with a brand new perspective on how to use them. Um, yeah. you know, and I think that like at the end of the day, um, that's just going to lead to the natural progress of the, the content that we create. Absolutely. It's been, uh, it's been pretty exciting. Um, I think for all of us to get back to in-person events, back to the studio, and then it's really exciting to see what's, what's coming out of it. Um, but I think part of the expectations in, in coming back to the studio has also meant um, a lot of pressure in what we start creating sure. um, as well. And I know something we've been hearing a lot, a lot about, um, especially at the, the last flow event we had uh, here in Copenhagen, where I'm located, just <laughs> um, is this phrase we heard over and over again is do more with less. Mm, yeah. So first of all, um, before you and I jump into that, um, anyone out there, what does do more with less mean to you? Um, if you want to drop that in the, the chat there, because um, I think we hear that phrase, but it can mean a lot of different things. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> you know, COVID really accelerated. Um, the brand's movement to online. I mean, there was a lot of brands already online, but this, this really accelerated uh, the ones that weren't online to get online 
and even the ones that were online to put more more of their product offering online, uh, which in turn just creates a sea of content and visuals and everything. And so, you know, we 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 have to uh, as creatives and brands, we have to stand out amongst this. Mm-hmm you know, this, this, this gigantic sea of content, um, you know, and, and so to do more with less, I mean, we're, we're having to create more content, you know, with the same budget or maybe even less budget. Uh, we're having to create more content with, you know, maybe less team members, you know, and, and, and how do you go about doing that? Well, you find people that are multidisciplinary. You know, you've got a, a photographer that's also a very uh, uh, talented videographer uh, that can kind of jump back and forth um, to <clears throat> to shoot uh, some of the you know some of the video and photography at the same time. Uh, you know, co- creating content with less uh, time for production. You know, we are in a fast-paced world. Things are changing constantly. You know, we're in, we're in a world of fast fashion. So lead times are, are, are less. And so we have, you know, less time to, to really uh, to, to produce the content that goes on to sell that fast fashion. Um, but, you know, it, it just makes us figure out different ways to leverage the content that we're creating. Right. You know, like how can we produce content that is flexible enough mm. to serve on an Instagram square and also on a broadcast uh, format of 16 by 9 uh, or YouTube uh, video, ad, um, you know, and, and so it makes us rethink this whole uh, production process of, you know, what's the best way to shoot this so that it makes it easy to repurpose this stuff with all of the different channels and all of the different formats that we're expected to deliver to these days in order to, to get the, the brand's uh, narrative and, 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 uh, product out there. Yeah. And I think, you know, this integrated marketing approach, right. Just being able to foresee the myriad of different ways that one piece of content can be used. Um, you know, and that is a a challenge in itself, right. Um, maybe that is the less, maybe you have less prep time and it means it's harder to think through all um all the different ways a piece of content can be used but um yeah you know, like and it's interesting with the the integrated marketing part of it you know it it, it it leads to efficiencies you know i mean it's like back in the day what it what did you have you had tv spots you had radio spots and you had editorial spots and you know trying to trying to integrate the production of those probably wasn't as easy nowadays, you know, you have the visual content needs and while there's, you know, there's different, different formats, uh, and, and, uh, channels, the, the, the underlying, uh, content is the same. It's just, you, you know, and, and so it just makes you think about the way to shoot it so that you can, you know, basically the way, the way I think about it is you just splinter it at the end. Like yeah. after you produce it, you splinter it and you make, you know, the, the, the best con you, with that single content, you can make the best content for each of the, the different outlets, you know, and, you know, that includes social media, that includes, emails that includes uh you know stuff for your press team for your pr team and uh you know banners and digital ads i mean the formats could not be any more different amongst those yeah and i think this is um something we've already heard a little bit about um you know we did a webinar earlier this year with with global edit and um hearing about the ways that that some of their um, customers, like we had Old Navy on, talking about trying to to manage assets for for both the ecom team and the marketing team. Like this is something that that people are already doing, already thinking about, um, and definitely with uh, social media and so many more platforms, it, it, it can be optimized even more probably. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to hold myself back because I know we've got another topic coming up that I think fits into this. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to zip my lips real quick. <laughs> but, well, we did know, have- just, but along those, you know, along the lines of, of, of do more with less, um, that, you know, you can look at that negatively or you can look at it from a positive standpoint. And, you know, the positive standpoint is that, you know, it's a creative challenge, right? And, and the yeah. way that I like to define creativity is cre- is making something special out of the resources you have at hand. I mean, we, like we, we will always want more, 
right? We'll, yeah. we'll always want more budget. We'll always want more team members. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, creativity allows us to figure out, like, I have access to these tools and this team. Now I have to make something special with it. And so, you know, if you look at it uh, from that perspective, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun, creative challenge. You know, um, an, another thing that we have going for us uh, in regards to this is like the tech and the, and the equipment. I mean, lighting equipment in the last 10 to 15 years with uh, the advent of LEDs and, you know, with, with phones shooting 4K and, and you've got D, uh, 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 SLRs, you know, that are shooting, you know, uh, just video that can be thrown onto a movie screen and looks like it belongs there, you know, and handheld gimbals versus the, the harnesses that the DPs for, for movies had to wear. Um, you know, it's just the, the equipment's becoming uh, more advanced. It's yeah. becoming cheaper. Uh, and so, you know, it's like all of a sudden for the cost of one camera back in the day, you can get a couple of SLRs and a couple of handheld gimbals. And then all of a sudden you've got an A and B angle and your content, you know, is, is, is immediately uh, more dimensional, you know? Um, and, and to what you're saying um, about the conversation with, with old Navy, you know, there's also a lot of uh, tech and platforms that uh, are, that are out there now that help to streamline these processes that are right. that are able to automate them um, so that you know we don't have to do as much human input, um, which makes it more efficient and less prone to human error, which uh, at the end of the day uh, benefits and allows us to do more with less. <laughs> Um, absolutely. Real quick, um, we had George write in and say what it means to him, produce more with less equals efficiency gains that reflect on the bottom line. Um, exactly. I mean, it is maximizing the return on investment of the content production. Absolutely, George. Absolutely. Um, and <laughs> let's see, what would you um, say to somebody that's being asked right now? to do more with less? Um, well, I would say, you know, get to know what, get to know what resources you have first. First and foremost, you have to have, no, you know, what resources you have. You obviously have to know uh, what the end goal is of the, of the content, uh, but get to know what the resources uh, that you have on hand. Um, and then uh, most importantly, um, get with the team. You know, like it, 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 collaboration, it, yeah, we, we all have great ideas, but when you start combining them with other perspectives and other disciplines, um, you know, something really special comes out of that, that no one individual, you know, would be able to necessarily come up with on their own. So, um, yeah, I would just say, and, and, and I guess most importantly, think about it from a positive standpoint, you know, like don't, don't sit there and be like, oh, God, they're asking me to do more or less, you know, like, no, like, all right, cool. This is a new challenge. Let's do it. Yeah. And I think um, that leads into what we wanted to talk about next. Um, so I'm going out on a limb here and dubbing this the new buzzword. Um, careful. Be careful. Right. We'll see. I mean, let's, you know, let's like, we're recording this, right? So if it does yeah. become the buzzword, you heard it here first. Next year at this time, we're going to revisit this. Yes, let's do it. Okay, so new buzzword. Are you ready? Um, creative Hub. Mm -hmm. So to be fair, this was brought up uh, by Carlos at our last Flow event. Um, Carlos from Mango. Carlos from Mango. Yep. Um, but... Uh, I'm choosing it as the buzzword because I think it encapsulates a lot of what we've been talking about. Sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, we, we heard at Flow New York uh, and then, uh, you know, Flow Copenhagen. I mean, we, we, we heard speakers talk about it at those events, but, but in the crowds and in and, and, and the networking and the, the pre uh, the pre dinners and post dinners, we heard a lot of people talking about reimagining the studios. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, the, the, the creative hub, um, you know, was coined by Carlos at Mango, but, you know, we had Kevin Mason, 
you know, talking about the uh, re rethinking studios, you know, where where uh, there, there are brands that, you know, are playing around with um, allowing uh, customers and, uh, and, and influencers to come into their creative studios and create content out of there. I yeah. mean, imagine that that's amazing like and, and and so talk about doing more with less right yeah um and then uh we also had uh peter davies at asus who was just talking about i mean the content that they're creating out of that studio is just phenomenal uh, i was blown away by it uh, yeah. to be honest with you, i hadn't barely been exposed to a whole lot of it until then uh and 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 now i'm just you know it's one of my favorite brands from a content creation standpoint um you know but like so at the end of the day, it's a studio being rethought. And so, yes. you know, with Carlos using the word creative hub, well, you know, whenever I think of a hub, you know, I kind of think of a wheel, right? Yeah. And, and the hub is the center part and there's all these spokes coming off of it. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the hub is the, the content that needs to be created and all the different spokes, you know, are the team members and the disciplines and the perspectives that they bring to the table to, to create this, this content um, and, and really move, move, move the content production along, you know, like much like a, a, a wheel does. So, um, but at the end of the day, if you break it down, what it really is, is it's a centralized location where, you know, getting back to in-person people can come together you know, with a crew, you know, and, 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 and handle these creative challenges that are put in front of them, the content needs for the, for the brand uh, and collaborate and, and share ideas, um, you know, and they're in uh, a comfortable surrounding, a familiar yeah. surrounding, you know, they, uh, they, they know what resources they have available to them. Uh, they know the layout of this space, you know, this, this space is, um, this space is versatile. It's, it's modular, you know, which um, really, you know, it allows uh, different size productions to happen on any, any given day. You know, there's prop rooms in this place. And, and so that can be re, re, uh, re, recycled through different campaigns or different content needs. And so, you know, doing more with less, you know, they're actually able to repurpose sets uh, and, or set pieces. Um, you know, so the, the, the creative hub, um, I think is, is, is a refreshing, I think it's refreshing that brands are taking a lot of the content creation back in house, um, mm -hmm. you know, because it allows them to, you know, con control the creative, uh, uh, better and hence the, the narrative of the brand, right. uh, and it frankly allows them to control budgets better, um, by, by doing that. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I think it's uh, a really great uh, direction. Um, you know, it allows uh, brands to be more agile, uh, you know, because the, the consumer and their content needs and desires is constantly changing. And so brands nowadays have to be agile enough to adapt to them pretty quickly. And I mean, it goes back to what we were talking about before and like this idea of integrated marketing and, and producing content for social media for website for print ads whatever it may be like when you when you've got a studio that um allows people in allows influencers in allows you know behind the scene tiktok dances what, whatever your brand does but if you turn your studio into a creative hub that one place can produce all the content you would ever need 100% um, you know, and, and what I like about the idea of the creative hub is with everyone in there and collaborating and, 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 and for different needs, right? Like, like most yeah. of most brands nowadays uh, are, are omni-channel, right? And, 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 and before, you know, really starting to integrate these marketing campaigns, you can have inconsistencies in messaging and themes and, and the, in the, in the, in the aesthetics um, and now, you know, with the with with the creative hub approach, um, you really get a concise, consistent message and um, visual representation and narrative of the of the brands across all touch points, yeah. all content touch points. And, you know, I think that uh, that goes a long way uh, in adding to, you know, the authenticity 
uh, because if there's an inconsistent message, then you start to wonder, well, which one, what is this brand? And whenever, you know, when they're delivering it uh, consistently, then you really understand. And then you can choose whether or not you want to support that brand or not. Exactly. Uh, right. Uh, but at least you know who that brand is. And I mean, that that fits in perfectly with, um, you know, this customer experience piece as well. Uh, yeah. When you are giving your customers um, a consistent brand story, mm -hmm. the, the experience is better as well as a customer. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's something we wanted to briefly touch upon. We're almost running out of time today. So do you want to briefly? Imagine that. We talked out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Um, but we briefly just wanted to touch upon um, this customer experience piece, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. We're uh, also seeing a lot of people focused on um, the UX, the UI, um, Diversity and inclusion. You Diversity know? I mean, and inclusion. Yeah, it's 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 really great. I mean, the 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 diversity and inclusion is awesome because you know the brands are uh, understanding that there there is no single customer, right? Or, or they may have realized that, but now they're 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 they're, they're showing uh, in their content. You know, they're they're showing models of all different types. They they are having the creative teams. Uh, uh, that are that are actually creating the content. It's all different types of people now are 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 uh, you know they're making a concerted effort to to push that um, you know and then also you know with, with their their UI and their UX you know they are experimenting. I mean just like they're experimenting with the content creation, yeah. they're experimenting with the UI and UX, trying to figure out you know how to engage this customer, how to make this a more um, uh, uh, experiential. Uh, 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 interaction. And yeah. so, I mean, it's, it's a pretty exciting time in design, uh, uh, web platform design, which I think we might have done some this year. We did. Um, we've got three minutes left. Um, yeah. So um, we did spend a lot of time this year. You know, we hired a new head of product, all those things. And Maybe if you're a Pixels customer, you've seen some changes. Do you want to run us through some of the biggest changes we made this year, Ryan? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> well, we a name change. We we now uh, call our uh, image viewer the close up, um, and love well, that. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and within the close up, we've made some uh, some great changes. Uh, one of the changes that I really like is we now have side by sides uh, with the final image and the color match image so that we can uh, that allows our customers to be able to view the, the reference image that they sent in to us and compare how it uh, how it looks uh, with the, the final image that we delivered. So that's great, you know, especially for my team, we're able to go on um, uh, with customer calls and, and take a look at it in real time with the customers, which we weren't able to do before. Uh, you can now zoom and pan multiple images, you know, much like some of the other applications like Capture One and, 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 and Adobe Bridge. Uh, you can zoom in uh, on a part of the image to see the detail of it. And on the before and after, the images on side by side uh, will follow each other, so that you can analyze, um, you know, what has been uh, what has been addressed in that image. Um, we also have changed, you know, the background colors, realizing that different uh, websites uh, are, uh, show differently. You've got blacks, whites, grays, and you will want to preview the images that we're delivering to you uh, on that background just to see how it will interact with your website. Uh, and one that I'm super excited about is we updated our keyboard shortcuts to be in line with the uh, software uh, that uh, all of the, the, the um, for, you know, the photography industry has been using for years. So we're, we're now our keyboard shortcuts line up with uh, all of the Adobe uh, shortcuts and with uh, Capture One. So, um, and last but not least, uh, we have uh, a place where you can now provide product feedback uh, that will be read by our head of product. Um, and, you know, once we start getting a critical mass um, on some of these requests, then that helps us to drive our offering uh, forward based on, you know, what is uh, received to be the most, the most needed things. Awesome. Thank you for that super quick rundown, Ryan. 
Um, we have like a minute left. We're right on time. Um, I just want to say thank you to you for coming and and sharing everything um, we've heard and seen over this last year. Thank you to you for having me. Oh, thank you. Um, and thank you for everyone that, that showed up today. I'm going to drop a, a link right now in the chat. Um, we just launched our recap blog post from Flow Copenhagen. And so some of the things we talked about here today, you can find the, the videos um, and the recap uh, right there. Um, so check that out if anything we talked about today was interesting. You can also find on our blog all the other recaps with videos as well, too. Um, super interesting stuff. At least we thought so. Um, <laughs> all right, Ryan, thank you so much. Um, everybody have a great rest of your 2022 and we will see you in 2023. So yes. Bye. Bye.